Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be using layer masks. So building on the idea of using layers, we're going to use them to apply effects only to particular parts of a Photoshop document. So we're going to go ahead here and open a new document. You can click on new or you can go to file new in your top menu. Go ahead and pick custom for your document type. And we're going to make both the width and the height 800. Make sure this says pixels. If it says inches, you're going to end up making a document that's like the size of, you know, a giant poster and it could crash your computer in the program. So make sure it says 800 pixels. And that's all you need to do and say OK. Go ahead and save this um, file, save as. You can go ahead and call this one um, whatever makes sense for you. It's going to be a pop art um, inspired grid, so I'm going to call it pop art grid and save it into my Photoshop files. First of all, we're going to use create guides to make evenly spaced squares so that this document has four quadrants. So to turn on rulers, um, you can go up to view and just click rulers and now they will show at the top and down the side of your document. And this can help you measure things. Um, right click on one of those rulers either the top or the side and switch the units to pixels so that it matches the settings that we chose um, at the beginning to create a guide you can actually just click on the ruler and then drag down and it will kind of snap into place right at 400 and it will also give you that indicator so you know that you're right at 400 pixels which is half of 800 and perfectly halfway across this document do the same thing by dragging from the sidebar ruler over to the center so that you have four quadrants created with those two guides. The guides don't show up when you export this image um, or use it later on. They're just for you to sort of help organize your content and keep things nicely lined up. Now we're going to create a new layer so that we have something different from the background. So down in your layers panel, you can click on the create new layer button, which looks like the square with the folded corner, and you'll have a layer one. This is where you're going to um, create a, a black square. So to do this, you're going to use the rectangular marquee tool. That's up here in the toolbar in the family of tools. If you have one of the other ones selected, you can click um, and hold down to select the rectangular marquee tool. Starting in the top left corner, you're just going to draw a square that perfectly lines up with that top left quadrant. What we're going to do is paint this square black. Make sure that you have black selected as your color swatch and then use the paint bucket fill tool and click in that square and now you have a black square. You can see that show up in your layer one down in your layers panel and you can go to select, deselect, or use control or command D as a keyboard shortcut to deselect that square. Now we're going to create another new layer above that black square and this is where you're going to add a photo of your own. So you can pick any photo that you want but something that's kind of a close-up photo um, or sort of a simple photo usually works best. So to do this we're going to go to file and place embedded and this is where you'll want to find a photo that makes sense for you. I've got one that I've saved here that is a nice uh, flower from the WSU campus and it'll appear on your screen um, with the free transform tools. You can hold down shift and drag at the corners to change the size if you want and you can also move it around just by clicking and we want it to be kind of centered into that quadrant um, and you want it to be covering up that black box entirely. Once you have it kind of in place, you'll be able to adjust it later if you want. Um, go ahead and either hit enter or double click the image to apply that transformation. Now we're going to do our first layer mask to make this photo fit into that black square. So if you go down to your layers panel and you right click on the, on the layer with your image in it, you can select create clipping mask. And this creates a little arrow that shows that, that is connected to the black square layer. And now that is being presented as a layer mask. It fits perfectly into that square. The rest of the photo still exists. And in fact, if we wanted to move it around, you can select the photo layer plus the move tool. And you can still move it around. You could even transform it to change the size. Um, but it's always going to stay within that black square unless you choose to break the, the layer mask. 
We're going to go ahead and group the image and the black square. So you can right click or click on both of those while holding down shift to select them. Then right click and say group from layers. And we'll go ahead and just call this group one. Now we have four quadrants, so we're going to make four copies of this group. You can right click on it and say duplicate group. We're just going to number these one through four to keep things simple. And it will, it will start out stacked on top of the other one. You can just drag it over to another quadrant. And here's a good tip. If you hold down shift, it will drag it exactly horizontally so that it doesn't get out of alignment. If you get it almost in place but not quite, as long as you're still on the move tool, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to sort of shift it into place a little bit at a time. So we're going to do that again. Duplicate the group. We're going to call this one group three. And we're going to bring that one to the bottom quadrant adjust it just a little bit with the arrows and one more duplicate group I'll call this one group four and I'm going to hold down shift to get it straight over it'll pop into place now we have four groups and they all have exactly the same contents but they fill different quadrants of our document in your layers panel you should see all four groups stacked up with the background at the bottom now we're going to go ahead and start adding some effects that make each picture look different, each quadrant. So go ahead and click the little arrow next to group 4 to expand that folder and see what's in that group. And select um, the image, the layer that has the image, which is a mask. We're going to use an adjustment layer. So if you click on that little icon that looks like the black and white cookie um, circle in the bottom layer, we're going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. And the most important step here is you want to click the little checkbox for color eyes. And that changes the color of everything. We're going to bring the saturation way up so that it's a bright color. And then you can choose any color you want using the hue slider. So I'm going to pick a blue to start out with. And then we can go ahead and close that up. But right now it's affecting all our layers, which isn't what we want. We want to be able to choose a different color for each quadrant. So if you right click on that hue saturation layer, you can say create clipping mask and now it only applies it has one of those little arrows down in the layers as well and now it only applies to that particular image you can go ahead and uh, close up group four and open up group three select that picture go ahead click the new adjustment layer click hue saturation colorize we're just repeating these exact same steps This one will make kind of a nice orange. And again, it's affecting all the layers except the one that's above it. But if we right click, we can say create clipping mask, and now it only affects that one picture. We're going to just repeat that real quickly with a group two and group one. So we're going to add that hue saturation adjustment layer, click colorize, bump up the saturation so it's a bright color, uh, pick something, we'll make this one a nice green. And again, the last step that's important is right-clicking on that adjustment layer and saying create clipping mask so it only applies to that one image. One more group to go. Click on that photo. Click hue saturation. Bump up the saturation. We'll go ahead and make this one kind of a... Oops, I didn't pick colorize, so it's going kind of crazy there. Um, pick kind of a pink. We'll bump up the saturation. And now we have four different quadrants, all with four colors. You can go ahead and try other effects, too, using um, the same technique. Other different adjustment layers, things like uh, color balance, um, levels, uh, brightness and contrast. You can, all, you can use all those effects in the same way. This is it. Your image is done. But here is one bonus step if you want to try something kind of fun with your images. So if you click back on one of your... Within one of your groups, you find one of the layers that contains an image. And if you go up to Filter, and again, this is optional, but it's kind of fun. You can go to Filter and Artistic, and we're going to try Watercolor, but you can pick any one of these. It'll bring up this preview window, and you get to sort of choose some of the, the settings here. You can play around with it. You can try some of the other, other types as well. Maybe we'll go with this one, Dry Brush, and say OK. And now that picture in the top right has kind of this artistic effect. 
So you can go ahead and try that with some of them too. Um, you can either apply the same effect to all of them or different ones, but that can kind of change the way that your image looks as well. Make sure to save your project when you're done with it and you'll be able to save this later on in your folder.